Now, NDE Radio, a weekly exploration of near-death experiences and similar encounters with the other side. Now, here's your host, Lee Whitting. Welcome to NDE Radio with Lee Whitting. Whether you're listening on TalkZone, by podcast, through the archives of our ad-free shows on our YouTube channel, or connected through the incredible content of our Facebook page. This show, referencing the number 23, is first being aired on the 23rd day of October, 2023. I've had only a glancing interest in numerology over the years, so when this year turned 2023, I didn't give it a thought. And when the Jewish New Year of 5783 began in September, and 5 plus 7 plus 8 plus 3 adds up to 23, I probably wouldn't have noticed either, except for the fact that that date initiated a war in Israel, where the final war of wars is biblically predicted to take place. So I thought to take a second look at yet another coincidence. In response to Hamas' brutal slaughter of Israelis, Israel declared an all-out war on Gaza, and Netanyahu told a million Palestinians with no place to go to leave fast. That brought the phrase 23 skidoo to mind. Now, I was often told to skedaddle when I was a kid, but Wikipedia tells me 23 skidoo means get out quick, a lot faster than skedaddle. The term 23 skidoo has been described as perhaps the first truly national fad expression and one of the most popular of fad expressions to appear in the U.S. The earliest known report of the slang expression 23 as a code word for asking someone to leave, is a newspaper reference on March 17, 1899, which read, For some time past, there has been going the rounds of the men about town, the slang phrase, 23. The meaning attached to it is, move on, get out, goodbye, glad you are gone, your move, and so on. As to where it came from, Wikipedia cites the Charles Dickens novel, Tale of Two Cities, as a possible origin. In that novel, prisoner number 23 gets beheaded during the French Revolution. Certainly, beheading is a quick departure. Moreover, I hadn't till now thought of the year 2023 as the formula for humankind, where 23 chromosomes multiplied by the two, the mother plus the father, makes the 46 chromosome number we are all created from. 2023 could thereby symbolize a formula for how the human race gets procreated. 23 is also a prime number, a number that can only be divided by itself in one without remainders. But more significantly, 23 is the ninth prime number, and numerology describes nine as powerful, representing completion, although not a final ending. It marks the fulfillment of one cycle so that you can prepare to initiate the next. Now, regular listeners probably know I've had a recurring interest in the so-called end times. Perhaps it's vibrations from having been born during World War II. It was just 10 days after I was born in Manhattan that the so-called Manhattan Project produced the first sustained nuclear reaction. Nuclear war quickly became a growing obsession with my generation when the Soviet Union figured out how to build the bombs. I noticed and managed to eke out a passing grade in high school chemistry with a report on the horrible effects of A-bomb radiation on the people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In the years since I was born, the human population has doubled, while the wildlife numbers on land and sea have been cut in half. The first Earth Day in 1970 was high on my list of celebrations, but Even before then, my mother was telling me to read Rachel Carson's environmental warning book, Silent Spring. The Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey about the biblical end times was a book I read as well. This book, the best-selling nonfiction book of the 1970s, claimed the Bible foretold an impending Soviet invasion of Israel, which Lindsey claimed would happen before 1988. Now, I was certainly aware of Jesus' warning that only God knows when the end will come. 
Still, as a new millennium loomed ahead, I wrote a master's thesis on the legend of a man cursed to live until the second coming and how he hoped to die in the year 2000. By the way, a 30-year-old cassette tape I made of that story um, got played over three shows on NDE Radio. If you'd like to listen, check out NDE Radio on your YouTube site and look for dates beginning with 12-31-2018, December 31st, 2018. Also on NDE Radio not too long ago, I discussed how the number 666 implied an AI tool that would play an inevitable role in the Middle East War, which I saw evolving out of Putin's assault on Ukraine. As it turns out, the Soviet Union lives on in Vladimir Putin's imagination, and Putin has manipulated Hamas and Iran into fueling the Israeli war we're looking at today. So while I'm not suggesting we're there yet, I feel compelled to annotate Jesus' comments on the end time signs we seem to be revving up to right now. Here's Jesus' prophecy as it appears in Matthew 24. It's written, Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things? he asked. Truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. Jesus was predicting how, beginning in 70 AD, the Romans would begin the total dismantling of that temple. In doing so, they created space on the Temple Mount for Muslims to build the Dome of the Rock and the Alaska Mosque hundreds of years later. And here's a side note. When my wife Charlene and I were in Jerusalem in the 1990s, we went into the ultra-Orthodox Jewish storefront promoting a plan for tearing down the Dome of the Rock and the Alaska Mosque, the third holiest site, by the way, of the Islam faith. The ultra-Orthodox plan was to build new Jewish temple right where the Muslim buildings stand today on the Temple Mount. And they told us they were delighted with how many fundamental Christians were contributing money to their proposal. By the way, we did not contribute to their cause. Anyway, Matthew 24 continues. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Well, Jesus warns them of religious persecution and false messiahs, wars, famines, and earthquakes to come, and told them, all these are the beginning of birth pains. And then he continued, At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Now, here is where we should hesitate to speculate on a timeline for these things. I believe there is no fixed date for the end times simply because it's still in our hands as to when human life will end. It's all based, as Jesus said, on how soon our love will grow cold. Jesus further told them, So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. That reference Jesus made to the book of Daniel is found in chapter 9, where Daniel says, The people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end will come like a flood. War will continue until the end, and desolations have been decreed, and at the temple he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Now, I find it interesting that Daniel said the end will come like a flood, since a leader of Hamas, Mohammed Deif, recently named the current war the Alaska Flood. There has been a raft of speculation, mainly among fundamental Christians, 
that the Dome of the Rock and the Alaska Mosque must be torn down, a third temple built, and then it will be desecrated by an Antichrist before the end of days comes along. But there is an interesting alternative to this last phrase I just read in Daniel 9.27. It goes, and one who causes desolation will come upon the wing of the abominable temple until the end that is decreed is poured out on the desolated city. Daniel read this way suggests the abomination was already fulfilled. It happened at the hands of Israeli police when they stormed into the Alaska Mosque in April of 2023. Well, here's a report from CNN. Israeli police stormed the Alaska Mosque in Jerusalem, one of Islam's holiest sites, for the second time on Wednesday, hours after they first raided the compound and arrested hundreds of Palestinians, despite condemnations from the Arab and Muslim world. The clashes, which took place as, as Alaska worshippers offered prayers during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan and Jews celebrated Passover on Wednesday evening, sparked retaliatory rocket fire from militants in Gaza. During the first incident on Wednesday morning, footage shared on social media showed Israeli officers striking, screaming people with batons inside the darkened building. Eyewitnesses told CNN that police had smashed doors and windows to enter the mosque and deployed stun grenades and rubber bullets once inside. Video shared by Israeli police show forces holding riot shields up as fireworks were launched back at them, ricocheting off the walls. Now, if Netanyahu's troops have already fulfilled Daniel's abomination of desolation on Alaska, the wing of the abominable temple, as Daniel might have called it, then Jesus' call to 23 skidoo to the people of Israel, beginning in Gaza, might already be relevant. Jesus told his disciples, Let no one on the housetop go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be a great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. And then Jesus quoted from Isaiah 13, 10, Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. So is it a stretch to point out that there was a solar eclipse on October 14th, ongoing earthquakes in Afghanistan, and the Iron Dome rocket war... Uh, looks like stars falling from the sky. A stretch, perhaps, but I'm mentioning it anyway. Jesus then allowed us this much speculation. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all of these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So no one knows when this will happen, but we are empowered to look for signs of the fig tree greening up. So let's take a moment to review, starting with our relationship to the calendars of time. We call this year 2023, and the count is roughly based on the years past since Jesus was born. I hadn't considered the 23 part of that number it could stand on its own until I realized that the Jewish New Year, which began on September 25th, is 5783, and 5, 7, 8, and 3 add up to 23. So basic human genetics come to mind, especially when the 2 of the 2023 comes into play, when the 23 chromosomes from the father's sperm and the 23 from mother's egg meet they pair up to form the 46 chromosome blueprint for the human body. The number 23 plays a role in the Jewish mythology of where we came from as well. It's a tradition that Eve had a total of 23 daughters, the original mothers of humanity. 
Of course, it seems like some AI fantasy that paired calendar numbers could procreate anything. But should we read this not as a coincidence, but as a subtle warning about the continuation of human life on Earth? There is another factor connected with this, too, that's worth noting. Regular listeners may remember the traditional number for a human is six, the number six, because uh, possibly um, Genesis tells us um, God created mankind on the sixth day. That may be the explanation for why we are all numbers six. Well, at mid-year 2023, the UN estimated that there were 8 billion, 45 million, 311,447 people on the planet. Now, if you would like to view a number six for each person, and if you have a large enough computer screen to hold that many sixes, take the number 23 and divide three into two. It will give you a six for every human being that ever lived. Make that division and it begins 0. 0.6666666666666. And I'll let you take it from there. Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year of 5783 that began this year on September 25th, celebrates not only the New Year, but also the birth of the universe and the beginning of the Days of Awe, 10 days of repentance and renewal that culminated this year in Hamas' brutal attack on Israel. Netanyahu's rage-soaked cries for revenge only indicate how embarrassed he is about his personal responsibility for this disaster. It seems he was so obsessed with manipulating the courts and the politics of the West Bank that he paid no attention to the verified warnings of the impending Hamas attack, which he got from both Egypt and the United States. Now, in response to Hamas attack, Israel's damage to the Palestinians of Gaza will only provoke attacks from other nations and could, with Iran and Putin's involvement, result in a major war. The recent accidental explosion of a Gaza hospital shows how quickly things can grow out of control. It seems the cause was a failed Islamic missile intended to hit Israel, but Hamas claims that it came from Israeli bombing, and that claim has electrified Muslim protests in all the countries of the Middle East. If that anger manifests an armed involvement from those countries, a war of wars could be at our doorstep. Anniversaries matter, and Netanyahu should have been alert to the 50th anniversary of the 1973 attack on Israel, which had nuclear implications even back then. It was thoughts of nuclear war that influenced, in part, my family's decision to move from Philadelphia to Maine, where we started what we hoped would be a self-sufficient family farm in that same year of 1973. So this is a 50th anniversary for me as well. The Yom Kippur War of 50 years ago, also known as the Ramadan War, could have meant the end times then and there. According to Wikipedia, the war began on 6th of October, 1973, when the Arab coalition joined, jointly launched a surprise attack against Israel on the Jewish holy day of Yom Kippur, which had occurred during the 10th day of the Islamic holy month of Ramadan in that year. Following the outbreak of hostilities, both the United States and the Soviet Union initiated massive resupply efforts to their allies, Israel and the Arab states respectively. During the war, which led to a confrontation between the two nuclear armed superpowers. By October 24th, the Israelis had improved their positions considerably and completed their encirclement of the Egyptian Third Army in Suez City, bringing them within 62 miles of the Egyptian capital of Cairo. This development led to dangerously heightened tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union and a second ceasefire was imposed cooperatively on the 25th of October, 1973, to officially end the war. So 1973 was a close call. The recent detonation at a Gaza hospital shows how quickly things can explode out of control. Evidence on the ground, including the size of the crater and the absence of damage to the building itself, when combined with satellite views, seems to show the cause was a failed Islamic Jihad missile intended for Israel 
and that it crashed with flammable fuel still on board. Even so, Hamas charges that it came from Israeli bombing has electrified Muslim protests in all the countries of the Middle East and stymied President Biden's peacemaking trip. But Palestinian anger does not come from one explosion anyway. It comes from the systematic persecution of the Gaza Palestinians over many, many years. This explosion of rage is fueled today by Israel's failure to recognize the Palestinians as brothers and sisters, going back to Abraham himself. They have treated Gaza like a prison and Palestinians like slaves. Israelis have behaved like the cruel sisters in the Cinderella story, making Palestinians both the victims and the glass slipper heroes of the Cinderella tale. If Prince Hezbollah now comes riding out of Lebanon to save her, then we'll be at war. And if that anger grows and manifests itself in armed involvement from all the Islamic countries, then the war of wars could be at our doorstep. Putin's Russia has a hand in today's Yom Kippur war, but his ally these days is Iran rather than Egypt. And his source for supplying Hamas with weapons comes from Iran as well. For Putin, the wars in Ukraine and Israel are linked. And if the United States decides to support Israel instead of Ukraine, we'll be missing the big picture of Putin's aspirations for power. So pray for the peace of Ukraine, as well as for Gaza and Israel. And in that regard, what prayer would be more appropriate than Psalm 23, the 23rd, the 23rd Psalm? So let me take you through the most comforting of prayers and what it offers you when you think about it. The 23rd Psalm offers relationship, supply, rest, refreshment, healing, guidance, purpose, testing, protection, faithfulness, discipline, hope, consecration, abundance, blessing, security, and eternity. Well, how can that be? Well, this reflection comes from the internet site of Wellspring Israel. The Lord is my shepherd. That's relationship. I shall not want. That's supply. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That's rest. He leadeth me beside the still waters. That's refreshment. He restoreth my soul. That's healing. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. That's guidance. For his name's sake. That's purpose. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that's testing. I will fear no evil. That's protection. For thou art with me. That's faithfulness. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's discipline. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That's hope. Thou anointest my head with oil. That's consecration. My cup runneth over. That's abundance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's blessing. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord, that's security, forever. That's eternity. Now let's say it again. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The earth is too small a place to live by 23 skidoo. And realistically, there's no place left to run except to run inside to the spark of God in our hearts. So please pray for peace in the Middle East and for everywhere else people are trying to run away on treadmill earth from violence these days. If you'd like to hear this show again or any of our more than 500 archived ad-free NDE interviews, Go to TalkZone's NDE radio site and hit the Past Shows button 
or go to our YouTube channel, NDE Radio with Lee Whitting, where you can subscribe to and comment on the complete NDE Radio library. And be sure to check out our NDE Radio Facebook page. Just search NDE Radio with Lee Whitting on your Facebook app. And listen again next Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern at Talk Zone for more NDE Radio. I'm your host, Lee Whitting, saying thanks for listening.